Okay, thank you very much for allowing us to go to closed session and come back. Um, are there any actions as a result of closed session? I would like to make a motion to nominate the following. Well, we do. Do oath of office first. Oath of office Sorry. We have oath of office. We're going to go a little out of order. I'm sorry, Meryl. So. Oh. It's you. It's you. It's me and Kamar. What do you do? You're done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, raise your right hand. <laughs> I, and then state your name. I, Seth Brown. Do solemnly swear. Swear. That I will faithfully execute the duties. I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees of the office of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees <laughs> of the State of Texas. Of the State of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution and Laws of the United States. The Constitution and Laws of the United States. And of this state, so help me God. And of this state, so help me God. Thank you. Do I sign my own? Okay. Now, Ms. Roman. Sorry. I would like to make a motion to nominate the following Seth Brown for board president, Leah Blackard for board vice president, and Barbara Kelly for secretary. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second to elect. Myself as president, Leah Blackard as vice president, and Barbara Kelly as secretary. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. And congratulations, everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go back to, into the, so we're going to go back into the superintendent's report. Okay, Superintendent's Report, version 2. Um, I am so honored to have the Calicos here tonight because they represent our district in such an amazing and beautiful and talented way all the time. We're just so very, very proud of you, and we appreciate your performances. We appreciate your hard work. And I'm going to ask Ms. Lassiter to come up and talk a little bit about some of their accomplishments. Good evening, Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, and distinguished members of the board. The award-winning Calico's Dance Team is honored to be here this evening to present our yearly awards and accomplishments. Our theme for the 22-23 school year was Leave a Legacy. Our three main ways to leave a legacy were to be attentive to grades and behaviors in and out of school, improving our technical skills, and being more powerful than last year, and most importantly, giving back to our community. We scheduled monthly opportunities for the team to give back, including assisting with Navarro College Kids College, High Five Fridays, Hispanic Heritage Celebrations, the Purse Project, uh, dessert donations to Compassion Corsicana at Christmas, assisting with Dancing for Our Stars for Navarro College, visiting the, elder, excuse me, the elderly at Legacy Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, and attending Star Pep Rallies at all five elementary campuses. It was a true gift to be able to help others, and our team learned many life lessons through these events. Competition season quickly snuck up on us, and on February 25th, we danced in the Waxahachie Dance Celebration Competition, and we earned the following awards. Officer Sweepstakes, Team Sweepstakes, and Gussie Nell Davis Award. We had six Division I soloists. Second place duet to Kaylee Kincaid and Abigail Walthall. Second place duet to Kimberly Sanchez and Cassandra Hernandez. Third place, Senior Ensemble. Second place, Social Officer Jazz. First place, Social Officer Palm. 
Judges Awards for Officers in Jazz and Lyrical. Judges Awards in all four team events, which were Jazz, Lyrical, Hip Hop, and Palm. Bronze Best Overall for Dance Officers. Gold Best Overall for our team. And we won the Giving Back Award, sponsored by GetPalms.com as well as being voted by our competition as the most outstanding team, which speaks volumes for our team because the other, our competitors voted for that. Um, second place, academic champion. Third place, large division officers. First place, large division team, which we have not done in 12 years. And third place out of 14 high schools for best of the best. On March 4th, we competed in the Alamo Dance Classic held at Karen Wagner High School in San Antonio. Once again, the Calicos held their own and brought home the following awards. We had 14 Division I soloists, second place duet to Kaylee Kincaid and Abby Walfall, Division I duet, Brittany Barreto and Tiffany Ramirez, first place small ensemble, Ayana Wilson, Jemiah Willis, and Sanaya Gray, second place senior ensemble, double Division I rating and a judge's award for our social officers, dance officer sweepstakes, team sweepstakes, and Gussie Nell Davis Award, Judges Awards in Officer Jazz and Hip Hop. Judges Awards in Team Palm, Lyrical and Hip Hop. Second place, Academic Champion. Second place, Dance Officers in the Large School Division. Second place, Team in Large School Division. We finished our excuse me, competition season by attending the American Dance Drill Team National Competition held at the University of North Texas. It was the hardest competition that our team has ever been a part of and we held our own once again. We had five dancers represent the Calicos in the National High Kick kickoff. Three were quarter finalists and two were semifinalists. Nine soloists were awarded Division I ratings and Kaylee Kincaid and Graham Conklin were selected as national solo finalists. The duet by Kaylee Kincaid and Abby Walthall earned second place overall at nationals in our large school division. The team brought home three national titles, including our senior ensemble, our dance officer hip hop, and our team hip hop. The greatest accomplishment was being selected as the grand champion team for GetPalms.com Giving Back Award. The Calicos were awarded $1,000 to give back to any charity of our choice. There's no better way to finish our year and our goal of leaving a legacy than to give back once again to organizations within our community. The Calico selected Compassion Corsicana and the Corsicana Animal Shelter to receive $500 each and those were awarded at our spring show on April 28th. It was a phenomenal competition season. We wrapped up our year with our 38th annual Calico Spring Show on April 28th and 29th and on May 6th we selected our officer line for the 23-24 school year. Our new social officers are, and if you're here, will you please stand, social officers, Ayana Wilson, Kaslyn Thomas, Kylan Thomas, Tamia Jackson, Jordan Carter, Kayla Pham, and head social officer was Miriam, is Miriam Lopez. Our dance officers, and if you will please stand if you are here in attendance tonight, are Junior Lieutenant Jamia, <laughs> Jamia Willis, excuse me, uh, Junior Lieutenant Elisa Sanchez, Junior Lieutenant Trinity Pipkins, <coughs> Senior Lieutenant Trinity Pipkins, sorry, she was a junior officer last year, uh, Senior Lieutenant Kimberly Sanchez, Senior Lieutenant Tiffany Ramirez, Senior Lieutenant Esminia Perez, and our captain for 23-24 is Miss Brittany Barreto. Next year, we will have our largest team in over 13 years with 63 members on the team and two managers. We will continue to uphold our tradition of excellence for Corsicana High School and Corsicana ISD. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Lassiter, and um, you got to the distinct honor of reading all this but I would be remiss if I didn't also thank Miss Tally for all of her hard work she is an amazing part of this group and we appreciate her very very much and thank you ladies you had an awesome year we appreciate it all right we're going to go into the child nutrition program update Not sure how you follow that, but we will try. <laughs> Dr. Have you Brown. Out those awards? Good luck. We brought food though, so <laughs> we have food. <laughs> Yes, so Dr. Brown, Dr. Frost, distinguished members of the board, um, I'm here today to uh, update you for child nutrition for the 22-23 uh, school year. 
so currently, uh, this is our staff for child nutrition by campus. We have 66 uh, staff members total in the child nutrition department. As you can see, we have four people in our office staff, which includes our director, Aubrey Blaylock, who's here, and we'll talk in just a little bit. Uh, 14 at CHS, 10 at CMS and uh, Collins Intermediate, five at Bowie, five at Carroll, four at Drain for DAP and Head Start, five at Fannin, six at Navarro, and three at Sam Houston Elementary. So currently, all of our students have a free lunch and breakfast. Um, so their first meal that they choose is free. Um, if they choose to have a second meal, then they will um, pay either $1.50 for breakfast or $2.80 for um, a lunch. A teacher member or staff member is $2.75 for breakfast, $4.25 for lunch. And if a visitor comes in, $2.75 for breakfast and $4.25 for lunch. So. I'm going to compare, it's not apples to apples, but 21-22, you're going to look from uh, September to actually August, and then right now we're going to look from August to April. So as you can see, in, this is how many meals we have served compared to last year. So currently, all the way through April 30th, we were at 480,494 breakfast. So we're almost at the exactly where we were last year. We're going to be over that for May, and we'll have June and July as well for summer feeding. And then at lunch, uh, we served 637,000 approximately last year, and we're at 684,394. So we're definitely up from last year, which is great. Um, so we're serving more kids and more uh, meals each day. So what does that look like on our federal reimbursement? So currently, like I said, from 22 to 23, we're at one million one hundred seventy nine thousand seven hundred and seventy five dollars and eleven cents for breakfast and then we're right at three million dollars for our lunch reimbursement so we'll still have may june and july and then august as well to add to these numbers for this year so we're already over as you can see for for lunch and then we're a little behind for breakfast but uh, we are working with the campuses like chs cms they don't always love to eat breakfast it's not as easy but we're um, having some breakfast station so they can come grab it on the way to lunch, on the way to class so something else we uh, started last year was a la carte sales which means snacks um, additional meals so compared from fall of 2021 2022 school year to this fall we had five thousand four hundred and twenty four dollars total with all the campuses in this fall semester, we had $106,896.70. So that is additional meals. We're gonna, I have a student here who's going to talk a little bit of why he likes to purchase an extra meal, whether his mom loves that or not. I don't know. Um, but that is, we have extra snacks and drinks and things that they can purchase. So uh, we're definitely seeing a large increase in our a la carte sales. So we completed lots of training this past year and moving into this next year. Uh, workplace safety and using fire extinguishers, bloodborne pathogens, health inspections. What does a health inspection look like so they can be prepared for that? Workers comp, knife sharpening skills, proper use of a steamer. A mosaic training is our system of where they, they can get their menus and the kids, that's how they pay through our mosaic. Menu planning, what does that look like so we can have better menus each week? inventory management, the HACCP health safety, and food handlers training. So we did all of that throughout this school year. So plans to improve child nutrition. We're going to continue our monthly trainings for ca cafeteria staff to improve their culinary skills, continue to improve the quality of food and the number of choices. Uh, the kids love the number of choices that they get, currently get, so we're going to try to improve that. We've talked about a throwback Thursday once a month uh, on Twitter. Some of the kids showed some pictures of the old school pizza. So we're going to do something once a month and do a throwback for uh, the students, especially at the high school. We'll, we'll survey them and the staff and do some different things throughout the next year. Improve our meal participation by 7% by May 2024 and increase and improve the a la carte items at each campus and continue to upgrade our equipment and serving lines at CHS. We're going to add some additional serving lines um, next year at CHS. There's a classroom type thing that's next to the uh, main serving line and we're going to make that our pizza serving line. Uh, I'm going to let Aubrey come up. He's our director and he's going to talk about the conference that he is planning for um, back to school for our staff and then we'll have um, he, Hunter Watt will be here to talk about um, why he loves our lunches and our breakfast. Let me pass them on. 
Good afternoon. Um, first time, a little nervous, but um, <laughs> well, uh, actually, I just want to just go over um, some of the things that we'll be doing on our conference, which will give our ladies most of their training for the year. Um, we wanted to do it with, with, so we wouldn't have to go and do try to figure out how we're going to try and get all their training done and complete it but in a timely manner. So what this does is take the hours that they're required to have and we'll do it during our um, in-service days. So as of, we have three days in August that we'll go ahead and have them come out. We'll have opening sessions. We have um, also civil rights training, CPR. We have kitchen uh, culinary trainings as well. Um, and then we're going to do a manager's class where we have some certain managers that it's time where their certificate expires, so we have someone coming out that actually teach that class and certify them, recertify them for the next five years. Also, we'll do for the uh, food handlers as well. So these are some of the things that we'll be looking forward to on our in our conference this year, um, and we hope that um, it will be something that they will enjoy as well as they will uh, have a good learning experience as well. So, thank you. So this is Hunter Watt, he's a junior at CHS, and he is my walking commercial. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> uh, the food, it's, I mean, it's like home cooking. I mean, I get two breakfasts, two lunches. I always have to tell my mom to always add extra money because I'm stay hungry. You know me, I can't miss a meal. <laughs> and. I, the lines are always long. Everybody's just waiting. You can smell the food after breakfast is over. Usually by third period, you can smell the food for lunch. Like it's just teasing you, waiting to eat. <laughs> breakfast pizza. Breakfast pizza. I, I get like four of them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Either the Crispitos or the, uh, the, oh, the, the chicken wings. Yeah, those are good too. Y'all need to go up there. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Thank you. And if you have any questions for me. CMS. At CMS. <clears throat> no. I know. No hotel. Yes, we're gonna and he talked to Region 12 probably next year. Then Region 12 will start sending some different campus, different school districts to us, because and we can host that. We could, you know, we can charge a, a small fee and they can still come and we can interact with other districts and things like that. Yep. Thank you, thank you, Miss Al. All right, we have Mr. Bowyer and Miss Witt for the Shack Report. All right, Dr. Frost, Dr. Go ahead. Technology, Dr. Brown, members of the board. Uh, I'm going to quickly give you our annual report for the um, School Health Advisory Council. Um, we're bound to a every three years to coming up with a wellness plan and to be reevaluated. And during our shack shack committee meetings for the year, well, a wellness plan was evaluated and goals were discussed and created. Uh, in, in that process. Uh, our goal areas for the year include nutrition promotion, nutrition education, physical activity, and other school-based activities. Uh, Carla Witt provided th that group with guest speakers from child nutrition and PE coaches from, from the district at the SHAC, SHAC meetings uh, so that they could share information and goals from their departments as well to go into that process. And, it, and, and I was there as much as I could be but she heads it up for us and does a, f a phenomenal job, and it is a group that goes in there and has good talks about, about the health of our district. Uh, every three years, the district must complete uh, 
an assessment. This, th this is a required assessment by USDA. The assessment was completed through those uh, uh, while, while evaluating the wellness plan in those meetings as well. They were extremely efficient in doing so this year, so we're definitely in compliance on that end. Uh, adolescent development, classes and videos for the district. Uh, in March, the Hope Center presented their curriculum to sixth graders. And the same week, sixth graders watched the adolescent vi uh, videos and fetal development videos uh, that were approved through the district that you approved earlier in the year. Our uh, paper consents went home and electronic consents for those sixth graders. There were, uh, there are 433 kids in that grade level. Uh, 379 consents were submitted. Carla had hoped that, that maybe 75% would participate in that. Uh, and she got 80 percent, um, percent, so that's phenomenal in my opinion. 90 percent opted in for the for the Hope Center information. 93 for the uh, the girls video in sixth grade, and 92 opted in for the boy video. And they're currently gathering consents for fourth, fifth, and eighth grade as well. Um, health services uh, for the district. This is just kind of a wrap up of what we provided uh, with our personnel for the district this year. Uh, CPR training for CISD administrators, coaches, life skills teachers, and cafeteria managers all on the front end of the year. Carla set that up and made sure that uh, all those uh, people with the district were certified. Uh, Narcan training for opioid overdoses. Uh, each one of our campuses, the nurse has that on hand in the event that that was ever needed. Hopefully it won't be, but better to have it not need it than to need it not have it. Uh, drug impairment training for educational professionals was offered at CISD, all nurses attended. Health videos for uh, Quaver Ed were taught by Nurse Witt, recorded and sent to all K through five grade uh, teachers through Canvas. Uh, we made the fetal development videos for fifth and sixth grade and ad adolescent video for fourth grade. Uh, some of those received Academy Awards this year. The coordinator for uh, co coordination of new health teaks, flu shots throughout the district on each campus. Uh, a learn new program. Our, our, our nurses had to, had to learn the new electronic program of Skyward through that process and entering the information and the rollover from there, which is not easy, but they've done a great job. Preceptor of nursing students from Navarra College, the LBN and RN program. Uh, they've responded to medical emergencies on campuses. They provi provided medical care assessment, education, emergency preparedness, and live talks uh, with staff and students. And as of May 1st, the nurses in CISD uh, have had a total of 30, 38,860 visits to, to their clinics. Uh, most of you have had kids on multiple campuses, so you know we've got phenomenal nurses in the district, and uh, Nurse Witt does a great job of, of leading us along the way. Any questions? On your Narcan, is it injectable or is it nasal? Nasal. Good. We think that's the easiest way to do that. Fixing say there's been some problems with the injectable actually getting it, so I was just wanting to, I'm glad you have the nasal. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Mr. Roddy, we have an athletics update. Yes, sir. Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, members of the board, good evening. Thank you for allowing me to be here to share some exciting uh, updates of accomplishments throughout this school year. But before I get started, I want to uh, chime in on the food at the cafeteria. I enjoy going over to the cafeteria and having lunch. It's, it's a treat uh, to be able to do that. It's close, it's inexpensive, and the food is outstanding. So uh, I don't do the breakfast, I do the lunch. So I'll just, I'll have to take Hunter's word for it on the breakfast, but uh, I do do the lunch. So, um, but I did want to share that. Um, I'm going to get started with an overview. My presentation and slides are all based on this uh, overview. Um, so let me share some of these outstanding accomplishments. Um, in our department, we have over 19, we have 19 different opportunities for kids to qualify for postseason activities, okay? And this year, we qualified for postseason participation in 14 of the 19 
activities. So my math tells me that's at a 74% uh, clip. So we're excited about that. Um, we had individual regional qualifiers in boys and girls cross country. Uh, we qualified for the playoffs and were by district fan finalists in both girls and boys soccer. Um, we had state qualifiers and a state champion in our powerlifting programs. Um, girls and boys golf each had an individual regional qualifier. Uh, for the first time in a while, softball was a by district finalist qualifying for the state playoffs. Uh, their core group are freshmen and sophomores, so we're excited about that. Uh, baseball was a by district champion area finalist. Uh, boys and girls track area, regional, and state qualifiers. Dr. Frost mentioned about uh, Deshaun Lloyd uh, placing silver uh, in the Class 5A boys 110 hurdles. Uh, tidbit on that, uh, prior to Friday night, his best time in that event, he ran 14-4. At the state track meet, he ran 14 flat, 14-0. I've been doing this a while, I've never, uh, and I keep asking, I've asked Doreen, I've asked the track coach, and I was like, have you ever heard of somebody shaving off four tenths of a second in an event, in a sprint, and I think we're all kind of stumped on that. So, what well, great accomplishment. The kid's in 10th grade, he's got a, he's got a lot of room to uh, mature physically, um, so who knows? Uh, what's going to happen with him, but he's got a lot of opportunity. Um, team tennis and spring tennis, we were the district champions uh, in team tennis. We went on to the regional tournament. We had regional qualifiers and in, in, uh, state, a state qualifier alternate in individual tennis. So a lot of uh, great things. Like I said, 14 out of 19 is good. Um, we're not going to be satisfied with that. We're going to keep striving to improve and see if we can uh, get those other five programs into the mix um, and add them to this list. Um, our participation numbers look really good. Here they are at seventh and eighth grade. Uh, an interesting tidbit on this is I was deep diving and looking at some of these numbers. I came across some numbers for 1920, which would have been the pre-COVID year. And we're not only ahead of that pre-COVID, I mean, um, the same as that pre-COVID year, but we're ahead of it. Um, 1920, we had 107 seventh grade boys. This year, we had 182. That's huge. Uh, eighth grade boys, we had 112 in 1920. We had 148 uh, this year. The girls' numbers weren't quite uh, as extreme, uh, but they're still good. Okay, so we're excited, excited about that, of uh, things going on at the middle school. Um, here's the participation numbers for 22-23 uh, at the high school. All these numbers are encouraging. I um, think we're in good shape with those. There's always room to grow, but we feel like we're in good shape with that. Um, these are some of the things that I've already just a little more specific, but a little more detail of the um, overview. The individual regional qualifiers, one of them, the girl, was a freshman in cross country. Um, football, our freshman team was a district champion. We're excited about that. We had uh, 79, uh, 71 kids in ninth grade football, which that is 12 more than we had in the 19, uh, 20 years. So we're excited about that, Those, that group coming through. Uh, we had a lot of kids with uh, uh, postseason honors uh, in football. Um, another thing that I included that that's, uh, our department strives for is community service. And I just wanted to highlight some of the things that the football uh, program did this year away from the field. Uh, every Friday, the morning high fives at the elementary and middle school, they did a youth football coaches clinic. They did a football clinic 101 for the mothers in our program. Uh, they did an event called Decals with Dads. Um, so that was awesome that they involved the two different uh, pair groups, organized team activities with them. Teacher Appreciation Week, we met teachers in the parking lot as they arrived from school. Um, Coach Sardini did a fantastic job of just supporting other programs. Uh, Bayon UIL send-off and support group 
uh, I've never been anywhere before where we, we took kids on a bus, coach did, over to Waco uh, to watch our band compete uh, in UL competition. So I thought that was uh, uh, outstanding. Uh, Burnett Parks Garbage Cleanup, uh, Salvation Army Volunteers, uh, once again, Coach Sardinia took group uh, to ring the bell, the Red Kettle, I believe they went to the Walmart. Um, nursing home Christmas visits, element, elementary reading buddies have been all over the district all spring, um, weekly, um, doing reading. Eighth grade signing day was something new and it was a hit, I believe. I think many of you attended that. So we're excited about continuing that uh, tradition, making it a tradition, and then Day of Champions volunteers. I would like to say one thing about the eighth grade signing day. I um, saw a parent that son was involved in that, and she told me that, and she's had a child go through and already graduate from high school and played football, and she said that was fantastic, that her son did not, I mean, he talked about it for a week. Good. And she said he is so pumped about high school football, um, and so I think that's great to get our kids to buy in and get their parents um, involved. Absolutely. Um, Volleyball, we've got work to go. We're making improvement. I'll talk a little bit about that uh, at the conclusion on some growth ideas um, that we're working on. But we're excited about the energy in that program uh, and the uh, young kids. Uh, we did have players with uh, all district honors in volleyball. Um, bas <clears throat> basketball did a, a great job, made improvements. Freshman team was 18 and 11. Um, these are kids with post district honors. Yeah, congratulations, Miss Roman. Uh, Lady Tiger basketball. This is another young group uh, with many freshmen and sophomores. Uh, in my opinion, they were the most improved from the beginning of the season to the end of the season that I witnessed uh, this year. So, um, like the the sub varsity records are a little misleading because you had the majority of this varsity team that would have been playing on these ninth grade JV teams. So um, that's a good thing. Here are your post district honors for girls basketball. Uh, girls soccer by district finalists. Um, feel like we're gonna have another uh, good group next year moving forward. Uh, a lot of kids with post-district honors. Same thing in boys soccer. I um, think we can improve in, in boys soccer as well and take the next step in both of those programs. Post-district honors. Um, the state champion uh, girl at powerlifting was outstanding. But well, we also had two other girls qualify for the state meet, and then a, a young man also qualify in powerlifting. The great thing about a sport like powerlifting, um, it gives kids an opportunity for a level playing field. So maybe a kid's not big enough to play football or fast enough or jump high enough to play basketball. But a sport like powerlifting, competition is derived by weight class. So that kid that's a 99 pounder or that little girl that's a 99 pounder, they, they, have, uh, competitive, they don't have, lose any competitive advantage uh, going in because it's all done by weight class. So that's a great opportunity for our kids. Uh, golf, uh, Jackson McMath was regional qualifier. Uh, Lane Farmer, Logan Groover, all district. And then we had a girl qualifier for a regional golf term as well. Okay, and those are young kiddos too. Jackson's a freshman. Uh, like I said in the overview, softball, we're excited about that. First time in a long time to qualify for the playoffs. And the cool thing about this group, their core group is young also with ninth and 10th graders. A lot of superlatives. We had a co-coach of the year uh, in softball. We had a co-coach of the year in boys soccer also. Uh, baseball team, in my opinion, overachieved this year. Uh, they were the by-district champions. They actually tied for second 
in the district. We uh, were seeded third due to tiebreakers, um, but they were the bi-district champion area finalist, and it came down to the uh, nitty gritty on Saturday. We very easily could be playing um, uh, this week. So great job with those guys. Those are the superlatives in baseball. Uh, track and field, it was a great year in track for us. We had first place finishes at three meets. We were the, uh, in 5A Region 2. We finished 10th in the region as a team. Uh, Deshaun Lloyd, he was the district champion in both events. He was the area champion. He was a regional champion in the 110 high, second in the 300 meters, and he qualified for two events at the state meet, which is very unusual. And then Jasmine Newsom was a regional qualifier on the girls' side. Those are the different individual kiddos. Team tennis, well, this is unique. Made playoffs for the 38th year in a row. It's outstanding. Uh, we ended the season ranked 19th in the state of Texas by the Texas State Tennis Association with an overall record of uh, 20 and 3. I think the future is bright there as well. Uh, we lose some, but we're getting some. And uh, spring, spring tennis, we had a ton of uh, go, go very far on that. They were district champions, multiple district champions. We had a regional semifinalist in Kate Higgs, and she was a state uh, alternate. But a lot of kids who did extremely well in individual uh, tennis. Okay. Um, that's the presentation. I, I do want to uh, share with you some things that we are doing to try to uh, grow in the program. And it's been an area of, area of focus uh, for me. And that's been uh, trying to partner with our youth organizations um, to see what role we can play um, to try to get these kids ready to go. And, uh, you know, when I sit down with the various youth organizations, they're very appreciative, but I tell them, I was like, you know, hey, part of this too, we want to help, we want to be a good community partner, but we're doing it for selfish reasons too, you know. Uh, we're trying to get these ready, these kids ready to come to us uh, because, you know, we want to win championships. And uh, we're playing to win, and we're trying to do everything we can uh, to achieve that. And a lot of these sports now in this modern era, if these kids aren't doing them when they are young and playing at a high level when they're young, uh, we're too far behind the eight ball uh, when they get to us to catch up. And that's just the bottom line in things like volleyball, softball, baseball, e even, uh, even basketball now. It it's become so specialized. So. Um, we're working hard uh, to try to do those things. I meet regularly with uh, Casey Jesse at the YMCA. Um, we've been involved, uh, partnering with the Boys and Girls Club on using some facilities and during basketball uh, season. Um, the club volleyball scene, um, we've met quite a bit about it and um, there's going to be some shake up on that uh, here in town in terms of a, a new organization. So we're excited about that. Um, those kids are working at our working out at our using our facilities two nights a week uh, right now. Uh, we're trying to get our coaches involved with it. Um, so you know we've had conversations about you know our volleyball coach or coaching another sport like actually coaching the 12 and under team or the 11 under team because we can do that uh, by rule. So. Those are things we're working on that. Uh, little dribblers uh, basketball on the girls' end. Our head girls basketball coach, Coach Claiborne, he's actually coaching a little dribblers group. They're working out uh, in our facilities. Um, Truth basketball, AAU. Uh, we're trying to, we're partnering with them on use of facilities on the boys' end. I've had the opportunity to watch them some. They're doing good stuff. Um, and then our summer track. Um, We've got a, on Thursday nights, there's a bunch of kids out at the stadium uh, 
running summer track. Terry Douglas uh, works with those kiddos. So um, I believe that in order for us to take the next step, it's not we're going to need to do these kinds of things, and it's not going to be an overnight fix. Um, it's going to be a process. Um, but if, if we can get the kids um, going in the right direction and, and playing and playing at a high level at a young age, um, then we're going to reap the rewards for it and see the benefits of it three, four, five years down the road. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, I, I, I as money, is, you know, right. right. Yes. It's a, mm -hmm. no, and it's a, a fine line, and I always have the conversation with the leaders of of the costs and the uh, opportunity for kids and what they're trying to do to meet those opportunities and not be cost prohibitive because we walk a fine line as as uh, we're stewards of the facilities, right, of, of the public and use of the facilities, and you know make it very clear that you know if if it becomes obvious or uh, where these things are trying to be done for profit and become super profitable, then we'll have to readdress uh, use of the facilities for, you know, discounted rates or no no fees at all. Um, but right now, I feel comfortable that everybody's doing it in the right way, and uh, they're trying to help the kids. And um, you know, hopefully, we're going to see some some real benefit from it moving forward. Any questions? Thank Coach, I just want to thank you for your hard work. Um, you've done such a great job um, in a short period of time, and I love the way that our the duration that our programs are going. And and I see so much that you're focusing on with character development and that sort of thing, and that makes a huge difference. Um, I, I love to win as much or more than anybody, but um, I also really, really know that the character development piece is significant and will impact our kids throughout their lives. So thank Absolutely. you for that. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you all. Thank you, Coach Roddy. Okay. Additional agenda items for the June 5th, 2023. 12th. 12th, excuse me. That's right, we did shoot. We did move that. So our next board meeting is June 12th, not the 5th. We moved that. Um, if you have anything, please make sure to get that to Dr. Frost. For them. Okay, is there anything else? All right, we'll go into consent agenda. I move we approve consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and, and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we've approved the consent agenda. Ms. Harrison, are there any audience for guests? Okay, we're going to adjourn into closed session, but per, uh, permitted by Texas Governance Code Section 551.01. Thank you very much.